What's up people, welcome back, and get ready for a Pawn Stars video, full of stupid experts on Pawn Stars. Let's hop into it. Number 1. Baseball Uniform A guy walks in, wanting to sell a Willie Mays jersey. Apparently, Willie Mays is a legend in baseball, and all his stuff seems to be valuable, so let's check this out everyone. I'd like to sell it today because I'd like to just cash in on it. I've had it sit in the closet, so it's time for it to go. My uncle acquired it in the late 60s, and when he passed away, my aunt just kept good care of it. And about two and a half years ago, she was nice enough to give it to me. If you open up the pants, it gives all of his details. This guy really came in prepared in a way that he is actually showing everyone what he could be doing with that shit. It seems authentic, but I need to see some documentation. You know, my family cherished it the way my uncle was a sports collector. And Just because it was in your family doesn't make it real. What do you want to do with it? I'd like to sell it. Give me an idea of what you want for it. I think around 45000 would be a fair offering. I'm going to need a little bit of proof before I shell out that kind of money. Let me have someone come down here and check it out. I've got to check for authenticity, game worn. Um, you know, there's a million little things that can make this worth money. One thing I'm known for is the ability to read some body language. So I really do think this guy is actually nervous, especially because of an expert coming in. He's suspicious for sure. Right here in the waist, what we can see is we have Willie Mays, 24, which is his jersey number, and 33, which is his waist, 26, inseam, which all of these would have been the size and the equipment number for him at that time. One thing I'm just not seeing is any damage to it. This thing appears to be in immaculate condition, especially for its age. It's game issued versus game used. Isn't it conceivable that, you know, Willie didn't slide during one or two games? Uh... That's all very possible. This guy seems to be pretty firm with his opinion, so I just don't know whether he is able to actually sell it for that huge amount he was asking for or not, but it doesn't seem like it. How much are you looking to get out of? I'd like to get 45000 And I'd like to be able to make some money. I'm not going to go anywhere near that. I'll give you twenty grand for it. No, I, I can't. You do uh, 40? I've got to make some money on it, man. I really do. Uh, I'll go about 22,000. This is so rare. I think we should be able to do better than that. Can you do uh, 37? They both seem like they are fighting for this one for sure. The price means a lot for both parties. So where is it going to go from here? I have no idea, but I'm worried. 30 grand. This is the best I can do. Can you meet me at 33? $31,000. Call it a day. Sounds good. All right, All right. John, take care of him. All right. Well, mixed emotions. There was the sentimental attachment, but I think my uncle would be impressed at the price that it actually achieved. Wow, Corey really risked this one, yeah? Well, at least a deal has been made over something that is very much real. Or wait, is it actually? Number two, Kobe Bryant. A guy walks in with a 2010 Finals warm-up jersey from Kobe Bryant himself. But that's not just it. It's signed by also Kobe Bryant himself. I love to see it now. Check it out. You know, even if you're not a Kobe fan, like I'm not a Kobe fan, but you gotta appreciate what Kobe did. I mean, he's one of the greatest players of all time. Over 30,000 points, over 7,000 rebounds, over 6,000 assists, two-time NBA Final MVP. He came out of high school and played for the same team his entire career. Wait a second. I need someone to pinch as soon as possible because goddamn this shit is hella impressive. Especially since Chum knows all that. Like, hello? Since when does he have knowledge? It looked like a goodbye. I do have a, a letter of authenticity. They got it right after the, the 2010 season. Okay. How much do you want for it? I'm looking to get $25,000. $25,000. Give me a minute. I'm going to give someone a call. I'll get them down here. Uh... Let's see this expert's opinion. I'm actually very excited to find out what they have to say. But I just love how Rick was full on honest and was like, maybe you printed that. What I'm hoping is inside here is a tag, a very important tag, which is going to date when it actually was issued. 7 of 2009. So it was issued, obviously, before the finals. It's good that this piece of paper is with it. You know, you are looking at a genuine 2010 game-worn warm-up. Now that's seriously nice. I mean, this thing is genuine for sure, and we love to see it. Who wouldn't want a Kobe Bryant jersey? Even I would buy it just to wear it once. And they, they won the final. Yeah, I understand that, but we've sold a lot of game-used stuff, and, and that's what the market bears, so. I beg to differ, but I mean, I know he's the expert. Thanks, man. You got it. Take care. Good luck. There'll always be a buyer for his memorabilia. These two were about to throw hands for sure. I mean, the expert didn't even shake the hand of this guy at all. Woo. I can feel the tension from the screen. This is Kobe, though. Come on. 10? 10 is my lowest. That's as far go, as I can go. I'll go 7,500 bucks. The lowest I'll ever go is 10. Have a nice day, man. All right. Thank you, guys. It's disappointing that I wasn't even able to make a deal. I was looking forward to spending some money and spending some time with my, my son. Well, if this guy guy thinks that this expert is wrong. I don't know what to say anymore. I understand where he's coming from, but it is what it is. Number three, Napoleon letter. A guy walks in with a letter signed by Napoleon himself, but he seems to be not good at making some jokes. Plus, he's asking for too much. So let's see. 
How about 4,000? I'll give you 2,000 bucks for it, man. That's the best I can do. You know what? I, I didn't pay that much for it, so let, let's let's do it. 2,000? 2,000. All right, sweet, man. I'll meet you right over there. I was a little disappointed that he laughed when I said 10,000. This is a once-in-a-lifetime piece of history. When you see him fighting for his life to get a good price on this one, you would say that he might actually need the money for something important, not a set of golf clubs. I'm not going to sell something like this to someone for 12 grand and not know for sure it's real. Why don't you go down and see Greg at UNLV, see what he has to say. I mean, it's got a COA, guys. Is it that big of a deal? We've seen phony COAs before, son. Fine. Now I got to go drive across town just to shut him up. Napoleon might have been short, but at least he wasn't a damn idiot. Even I took this one personally, old man. But at the end of the day, we'll just listen to what you have to say, so might as well. Anyway, let's find out if this is authentic or not. I have a good feeling about this. Part of the proclamation he made to his soldiers after having won. Okay. So what he says here is, soldiers, we've done everything necessary to assure the happiness and the prosperity of our country, then I will take you back to France. There, you will be the object of all of my attention. He's the emperor, he's the head of the whole government, you can give them anything they want. He's say, I was at the Battle of Austria, great battle we've won today, and people will respond to you, voila and brave, there goes a brave man. As much as I love knowing more stuff about history, please let this professor, with all due respect, freaking cut to the chase, I'm seriously nervous now. This is not one of those original manuscript copies. No. What we consider to be the original, which looks exactly like this, that's in the military museum just outside of Paris. <clears throat> okay, how can you tell? Well, a handwritten ink document from this period, we would see evidence that somebody had written this out with a pen. We would see where there are blobs of ink, and we'd see that the ink would have faded in color. Well, there goes $2,000 down the drain. Right on, Corey. $2,000 down the drain for sure. But it won't be the only thing that's going down the drain. Just wait till you go back and watch your job go down the drain. Give me my two grand back. Corey, why don't you take it home and remind yourself not to be so damn stupid? <sighs> Fine. Dumb kid. Well, I'm glad they forgave him for what he did. It isn't that easy to do. I mean, he just made the shop lose $1,980. Just like that. Number four, comic books. A woman walks in with a huge comic book collection. I mean, she has seven boxes full of comic books, so I'm guessing at least one is of good quality. Let's see. Okay, there's some pretty cool stuff in here. Dracula, I know you've heard of Dracula. Lord of the Vampire. The Avengers are so hot right now, they have so many movies. I think this is the first one that Rogue made an appearance in. Pretty cool. Doctor Strange could be worth a few hundred bucks on its own. I'm honestly living for that roast, not gonna lie. Cause like, damn. I mean, look at Chum just being way too excited for this shit. I just know he might just buy all of them and keep them. I may not know everything about comic books, but these comics are priced between a quarter and 75 cents per book. And there's seven boxes of these babies. Sometimes you can just feel the deal. Sometimes you just can feel the deal. What I way to put it, chum. I just know you are not here for an actual deal because knowing you, you might take all of them with you. Um, would you go 450 on them? 500 is gonna be the lowest I can go. What do you think? I don't want no parts of this if you don't call Paul now. Life is about chances. Sometimes you just gotta take them. I'm gonna do the 500. I'm gonna show everyone what an expert I really am. This is how you do it, Antoine. This is how you make a name for yourself in this business. And when these are gonna be worth five grand, I'm gonna be the one who gets the reward. $500 for these seven boxes full of comic books? I really don't know if this is the right price or not. I doubt it, though. Anyway, let's look at Rick's opinion on it all. Some good stuff. There's Doctor Strange in there. Yep, I said it pretty good. Um. All right, the big question, what are they worth? Uh, this stack I pulled is probably, you know, there's about 200 bucks retail. And other couple hundred pounds of comic books are worth? Uh, about five cents a book, if you're lucky. It's like, it's common stuff. There's nothing high grade, nothing that's really worth getting certified. How many of them are there? 300 in a box, so 2,100. 2,100 nickels. Oh no, oh no. Chum really went overboard with that purchase, and I just don't know what's gonna happen from there. But now we know that the so-called expert definitely lost some money. On some comic books, I'll be lucky to get like 180 bucks out of, and seven boxes at the recyclable paper. So they're basically worthless. No, they're not worthless. <sighs> Thanks for stopping by, man.
Anytime. Well, whether you like it or not, they are actually worth nothing, chum. You just lost maybe a couple hundred. I'm not good at math either, so let's move on. Number five, Joe Jackson. A guy walks in wanting to sell a book that is signed by the one and only shoeless Joe Jackson. And Jackson's signature is definitely as rare as it gets. So I'm excited. Let's check it out. Um, the first one is about shoeless Joe, um, but it seems to be about the darker side of sports. Yeah, the story is that him and seven other guys on the 1919 Chicago White Sox took money to fix the World Series. They were all acquitted in a court of law, okay? They were not found guilty in a court of law, but the whole incident more or less destroyed his baseball career, his reputation for the rest of his life. Right. If it wasn't for the scandal, there is no doubt that he would make it to the Hall of Fame. Damn, this guy looks to have gone through a lot. I mean, I know little about his story, but as usual, since Rick knows a lot, he decides to put us all on some extra knowledge, and we love to see it. He was embarrassed how bad his handwriting was on his, the only thing he could write, so that's why you never saw it. Okay, so this could really be an amazing signature. You will not find a rare autograph. But Joe Jackson's signature is so rare and so expensive, I just have to take the gamble before this guy walks out the door with it. This really is as rare as it gets, because I said I know little about Joe Jackson, and I know for sure that he was illiterate, as Rick mentioned. So him signing a book, that's rare. Um, I'm thinking closer to 10 grand. Of all the sports signatures in the world, this is the one most faked. Okay. Okay, and I have no idea who this person is who authenticated it. Right. So, I mean, I'll take a shot at 10 grand. It's just not a signature. It's on a book about the dark side of sports. I love how this guy is making sense. I mean, it should be worth more for that and only that, right? But I really get the game Rick is trying to play now, and I love that for him. But I'll go 13,000. If you do that, I'll do it. So, <sighs> well, okay, Let, let's do it. All right, deal, man. 13 grand is a lot of money, but a once in a lifetime piece like this, I think it's definitely worth the gamble. After his purchase, Rick went to his book expert, Rebecca, to see her opinion on whether the signature was authentic or not. And it turns out that she wasn't actually convinced. Number six, baseball card. A man walks in wanting to sell a 1909. Cy Young baseball card. And one thing I know about baseball cards is that these are not cheap at all. So let's see. No one really believed baseball cards gonna be worth money one day. Especially in, what year did you say this was? 1909. The first baseball cards came out in the 1800s. But the early ones didn't come in a pack with gum, like when I was a kid. They were used to help sell product. In packs of gum and packs of tobacco. Wait a second, packs of tobacco for kids? How does this work, everyone? Oh wait, my mind is lagging, just move on. You think it's that bad, huh? It's definitely that bad. One of the things they judge when they grade baseball cards is the corners. Hell, we can't even grade one corner. I have a buddy that knows all about this stuff. He's not available at the moment. Even in the best of condition, most baseball cards are barely worth the stock they're printed on. I mean, even though we all can see it is not in good shape, all I can say is that it really seems as something very valuable that holds a lot. And I mean a lot of history. I'll give you 300 and I think that's a lot of money, but the 300 bucks is the most I want to be on. Three it is. Okay, all right. Go write them up, Chump. Be careful with that. Don't spill a Coke on it or anything. Yeah, like I can hurt this. To me, 300 bucks is definitely low, but in this economy these days, I'll take it. I don't know whether to like that offer or not, but as long as this guy's okay with it and is satisfied then, who exactly am I to actually judge? No one. He also has a record for most uh, complete games. How many games did he play? He played over 22 seasons. He started double headers. He finished double headers. He pitched an awful lot back then. Yeah, because I know back then they'd have 22 inning games and it would be the same pitcher the entire 22. Cy Young actually did change baseball. His fastball is so dominating that it's rumored it's because of him that they had to move the pitcher's box back five feet to where it is today. That's actually pretty nice if you ask me. I just know that Cy Young is all about the history of baseball. And ironically enough, I knew that this change occurred because of him. You're looking at around two, $250 tops. Okay. These old cards can be tricky sometimes with condition. He just needs to make sure he gets a hold of me before he makes his next purchase like this. You gotta get it for the right price. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. Damn, he lost with this one, but it seems like he lost a lot with it. And I just don't know whether to be happy or sad because Rick lost something this time. Number seven, Gibson Mandolin. A guy walks in wanting to sell a Gibson mandolin, and Chum looks excited to the point where he starts playing the mandolin, as if he actually is performing at a concert. I know the name Gibson, so I took a gamble and thought I would pick it up, and hopefully I can make some money off it. All right, well, let me call my boss over here. Hey, Rick! Corey, Rick! I guess no one's here. The thing that makes this mandolin special is that Gibson made it. Gibson mandolins are sweet. We had a lady bring one in from the early 1900s and Rick practically drooled all over it. So
So, if you notice something, Chum tried to call Rick and Corey, hoping someone would come help him out. But when no one did, he started acting like the expert he wasn't. What are you trying to get for well, it? Well, I'd like to get three grand out of it if I could. Would you be willing to go uh, any less? Because normally, you know, I actually have a spending limit of a thousand bucks. I'm not supposed to go any higher than that. It's not the end of the world for me if I don't sell it. I don't mind walking out of here with it. How about 1300 didn't he just say he has a spending limit of $1,000? This is not what you just did, chum. Watch him lose some money. Ugh, I'm pissed. $1,500, and we got a deal. I mean, it is really good condition. Fifteen sounds fair. I can make a 15? profit. All right, that sounds good. I appreciate it. Rick's probably going to give me a raise after he sees this. Let's just hope this happens, but I have a bad feeling about this, especially after the comic book incident. Let's see what this expert has to say now, because I'm kind of anxious. And it's not even a G that Gibson ever used. You got your decal in there, like a Gibson but it's not the right decal. And the finish is like plastic. Gibsons are covered in a lacquer finish. And this pick guard is totally wrong. This is something Gibson never even used. This is fake as hell, man. Oh God, I knew there was something wrong with it from the moment he started playing it. I just saw how all of this was not real. I mean, the sound of this mandolin is one a toy has. It, yeah, maybe about a hundred bucks. All right. Yeah, dude, sorry about that. Thanks for the bad news, all Jason. Right. Call me anytime you got any questions, dude. Oh, I hate mandolins. Well, yes, chum. You just lost a fortune on some fake ass shit. This is pure disappointment, if I'm being honest. So I hope you didn't get scolded.